Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Jean van Eerde, I'm a freelance logo and branding designer from the Netherlands. And recently I got a question to give a guest lecture at Mold University and tell about my experience as a freelance designer. And in this guest lecture I also told about my uh, design process, how I calculate my costs and what I think your work should be worth and how I calculate that. Uh, I also did an interview. Uh, I interviewed three uh, designers that I know throughout Behance, Logopoms and Dribble. Uh, and asked them about their experience as a freelance designer. Uh, they also shared their thoughts about how they calculate their own costs and uh, what their design process looks like uh, and if they can give advice to the audience for the guest lecture. Uh, it's about 20 minutes and I really hope that you enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, feel free to share this. Uh, no, talk to you soon. Bye bye. Well, I'm a, I'm a native New Yorker. I'm originally from New York, New York City. And um, now I'm in the Midwest. So for any of your, those that you're gonna be sharing this with, it's, it's in the middle of America. Take the United States and it's in the middle, close to Canada is where we are. And um, basically I'm, a, you know, I, I started out as a logo designer, as a letterer. I, I, I was using tools that probably nobody listening to this would even know anymore, you know, so it, they wouldn't even, they'd go, what? They had to look at it, they had to Google it, then they'd have to find out. But basically, um, so I got into the business before computers were even in offices. So I mean, that's, which is like, some people are like, what? Yeah, there were actually businesses, we had things called drawing tables and T-squares and things like that. And um, and that's that's basically what I started out as in, as a logo specialist, a typographer in terms of actual developing alphabets. Hi folks, uh, I'm Scott Fuller. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator and uh, a little bit of a type designer here in, uh, I'm in Ackworth, Georgia. I run a little place called the Studio Temporary. Um, but we do all of those things, and by we, I mean me. Um, I have been in the field now officially, I guess, for about six and a half, seven years, and um, I've worked everything from, you know, from an agency to uh, in-house design to design director, um, and then, of course, freelancing constantly, like, like most designers do. My name's Damien, um, well actually Damien Kidd. I'm a freelance graphic designer from Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. I've been a graphic designer now for six years. Um, I also work full time as a designer as well. Um, but I, I basically work all the time. <laughs> um, and I only went to university when I was 24, so I was a mature student. Not that I'm very mature. Um, but um, I studied for three years and qualified when I was 27. But before that, I used to work um, in McDonald's. I used to drive forklift trucks. You name it, I've done it. Um, but I've always been interested in art, which is why I'm now a graphic designer. Obviously, you can split it into the subcategories. Um, for us designers, like, we get a lot of logo jobs, a lot of logo jobs. Now, people that aren't designers think that that is branding, but it's not necessarily branding because the branding is the ideas, it's, it's the theory, it's the company um, like mission statement, it, it's everything that the company is client-facing. Like, so it, it, branding is how a company appears to their customers. Whereas logo design, it's purely, it's, it's, it's symbolic. That's what it is. It's how, it's how people draw the similarities to the company. That never goes out of style. This idea that, uh, you know, I think Paul Rand said it the best when he said a logo is basically like a road sign, you know, you, it's just a name, but it, after a while it kind of gets its own recognition, but something that is simple to the point um, using, um, you know, 
using shapes that, that people really understand, you know, normal shapes, you know, something that people could look and say, okay, I, I can see this, I, I recognize, and it's, and it's kind of pleasing to the eye. But um, something that it, it's, um, you know, nice, simple, to the point, and um, something that's going to last, you know, hipster this and that and whatever. All the guys that crossed arrow is going to be going out of business here here in the next, I don't know, six, seven months because there's going to be something new coming along. Mm -hmm. um, but design like this, you know, design like, you know, some of the old, old masters did, that stuff sticks because it's based in, it's based in form, it's based in, you know, good function. And it's something that's not going to, it's not going to go away after five years. The notion uh, some designers approach um, design or creating a brand as a cosmetic exercise. To me, that's very one-dimensional. That's, of course, that's part of it. It needs to look good and needs to have the right feel and right aesthetic. That's 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 fundamental. That's like without a question. But the purpose, but the purpose of branding is it is it is differentiation. Consumers. People who of any sort, whether it's on business business side, consumer side, doesn't matter. Differentiation is key. If I present something to you and I present it, and it sounds and sounds and looks and smells and tastes kind of like the same thing as over there, it's going to be like, okay, which one's cheaper? Because there's no no distinct differentiation. That's the job and the role of a, of a branding of a branding professional. So that's why I'm looking at the landscape. And so this guy comes to me says, hey, I want to open a burger joint. So my, my situation is, why is anybody going to care about one more burger joint, right? I mean, I mean I'm excited about it, but I have to ask myself that question. What, how and why is it, am I going to and make anybody care about this one more choice in a place where there's already many choices? And so I had to kind of look at, okay, what can I do in terms of style, how can I make the style different? How can I make the aesthetic different? How can I make the visual approach different? Um, if you look at the, the various chains and, and options, they all look very, pretty similar. Then there's not really any real distinguishing quality. Um, and so I had, I had to really look at that. And so part of it was looking to make it different. How am I gonna do this? And, and in, in doing that homework, and asking those questions, I finally came upon the, the, I was looking at what's the message. I got trains, burgers, and, and just looking at it, looking at it, looking at it and letting it, letting it sort of percolate. I ended up with, I ended up with C-H-E-W, C-H-E-W, which spells chew, chew and in and obviously for anybody that knows trains it's like choo choo you know you got you got the choo choo and then uh and then chew you're actually you know eating something and so the thing the factor of choo choo is it was and i remember i was like this is it i mean this was it there, there will be no confusing this this burger brand with any other burger brand and then when i presented it to him he was like oh my god it's been right in front of us all this time, but we never saw it, right? And so that was the that was the real kind of special fun part of it, and it was perfect. It was just perfect. Plus the sound card, um, which I don't have one here, but you you, you may want to grab a, a sip snippet from the the online the YouTube uh, video with, with that because that's where people go, oh wow, because it's like you look and you hear you you see the words. You hear the old sort of sound like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, and you go, ah, oh, it all, the, ooh, the, 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 the clouds part, the sun shines on your face, and you're all happy. As far as the process goes, generally I will, you know, I'll sit down, I'll have, I have questions, I have lots of questions. Um, some are, some are answered really quick, some, it takes a little prying, mm -hmm. but once again, this goes back to kind of the, the sharpening the ax before you cut the tree down, you know, um, otherwise you're just pounding away and not really making a lot of process. Like you're doing a lot of work, but you're not gaining a lot of ground. And this is the sharp, this is the sharpening beforehand, you know? So I'll, I'll talk to my, ask the clients, 
the biggest thing that I can that I can stress during this point is um, is just listen. You know, pay attention because they might say something profound um, without even realizing it. But that will um, you know that'll kind of make you know that's like the, that's it. You know, you can say, oh man, I can grab onto that. Yeah. You know, and then you see that it's like, hey, you said this. How do you feel? You know, uh, about this? And it's like. I've been trying to say that. All right. So we'll expound on that a little bit more, you know, always listening, always taking notes, always paying attention to that, mm-hmm. you know, taking the notes through here. And then it's just, you know, it's, you know, sketches to, you know, to sketches to more sketches and more sketches and more sketches and more sketches. More sketches. You're getting the idea. This is my work for that for for one logo, right? Like I did all that to get to this, right? So this is this ended up being the final piece. But if you look, right, I'll start. I'll start kind of building a little bit here. I'll go off on a tangent. You know, what would this look like as a typeface for something completely different? And then I slap myself, rein myself back in. All right, back on point, you know. And then, you know, here's all these sketches. Most of them you'd see in my in my notes, you know. I start out, you know, I start out with these guys and this is kind of cool. This is for a um, screen, like screen rooms. There's a lot of those and stuff um, with restaurants and, and back porches and everything like that over here. Um, so, you know, so that works. And then, you know, here is, you know, this one is like a cool, like AS monograph. That's kind of cool, but not great. So you move on. There's, you know, color options from a previous identity that I did, um, things to look at. Um, and then it's just, it kind of evolves from there. And then I come up here and I start out, you know, here are, you know, I'm starting out with like an A, like I'm trying to figure out how to do that. So, or that shape, you know, this idea of, you know, um, like covering or stuff like that. There's four options right there. Right. And then another four options up here, you know, all these, all these little things. And you can say, all right, this one is kind of little Jefferson Memorial. This is like stained glass. That's not going to work. This looks more like a tent than it does an actual, like a room, but does it give this idea of protection? Maybe. You know, so you kind of you kind of move on. You try colors. You try all these little different things all over the place, and then you kind of you start to to narrow it down. Um, if I want to try something out, you know, just just like a quick test, I'll do another quick sketch. You know, no, I'm not worried about proportion or whatever. I just want to see if the basic idea works. So I'll make a five second sketch in my book, uh-huh. and then I'll say, all right that's good enough. I'm going to try it on here. So I'll come in here and do that, but I already have an idea that it's going to work. Um, just by, just by quick sketch. And then, you know, and then you, you just kind of zoom in on that. I say that uh, a lot of logo design, um, especially after you've done a lot of sketching is really just a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of tweaking and a lot of exploring. It's, it's pushing like little ideas like this. Um, this ended up being the final piece, you know? So, um, you know, so what do I have? I've got it right here, just like this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that looks a little bit like a, like an aircraft. You know, this one absolutely does. This one just looks weird because it's got like these little ridges and whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, this isn't going to work. You know, so, all right, I'm going to try this. This, we're starting to get somewhere, but the, you know, the outside is really big. It looks like it was just stuck in there, right? So I can in and say all right much better you know make sure the corners are nice and right you know make sure there's like this bottom part doesn't feel like it's there's too much space you know Mm -hmm. and then all right now time to choose time to choose the typeface how are we going to do that Mm -hmm. you know and you figure out you know how you know how everything is kind of going to be you know worded you know here was the final kind of the final version this gives you an idea all of this is for is for one logo. At the moment, my price for just just a logo design with um, three to four concepts is like six hundred pounds. Um, so that basically covers all of my time. Um, 
for that project. Um, although I do say in my little um, paragraph that I send over that if further down the line the project isn't going the way we want it, we need to renegotiate costs. Mm -hmm. So I basically, um, I will base my price. It's roughly, I would say that I spend on a logo design like 15 to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. um, now I could charge more, but in the UK and f where I live, Mm -hmm. People aren't willing to pay much more than than what I charge. Yeah. Um, I find international people will pay more because they appreciate it more. I don't know what I don't know why that works. So yeah, that works roughly about um, that works out roughly about thirty pound an hour. Okay. Depends on the client. You know, some you know some clients can can do more. Some clients can't. Mm -hmm. But you always try to get something because. Um, you know, sometimes you do it for fun or do it for a friend. <laughs> what did I say? They're, they're projects that you do for fun, projects that you do for friends, and projects that you do for funds. As far as calculating price, though, I mean, you you got to figure out, all right, here's the budget. Here's what I need to do this. You know, if they can only give me maybe a couple hundred bucks or something, mm -hmm. they may only get two concepts, mm -hmm. you know, and then we go from there. never do work for free unless it's a charity like you know what i mean right like and you feel really strongly about it do that work for free like you know what i mean um but do not work for free even for friends you are a professional you need to remain professional and i think that's really good advice um i've learned the hard way i have done work for free mm. and lost out and i I strongly recommend nobody to work for free. Always cost for the time that you put in. Yeah. Have good relationships with people, not just not just your clients, but your vendors. I have printers, I have screen printers, I have you know letterpress folks. I have people that I can call up at a moment's notice and say, "Hey, I'm really sorry, but I need I need some help. You know, can you help me?" And they know that you know I pay on time. They know that I give them good files. That's the other thing. Make sure those, and it's been said before, but make sure your files are tight. There's not a lot of extra points. Make sure your colors are right on par. You know, make sure your, your typefaces are included in there, you know, your fonts or whatever. You know, because if you create more work for people, I think you kind of get flagged. I think, you know, it's like, okay, he's gonna send me this file and I'm gonna to have to do all this work to prep it. Learn how to prepare your work. Medium is, is phenomenal. Actually, every one of your listeners and viewers subscribe not only to me on medium.com, but they should subscribe to, I have a publication called Successful, Strate Successful Brands and Disruptive Strategies. So they can, they can subscribe to both. Usually when someone gets out of school, they're like trying to show their portfolio and they're trying to show their resume and they're, 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 look, look at me, look at me. See, I'm really worth something. Look, look, it's right, it's all written here, see? I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. I've, I picked someone's nose, I cleared someone's earwax or whatever they did, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's the kind of thing where um, you need to really, really be engaged. You need to be of interest. And if you're of interest, you will actually share things that are of value. Um, a lesson I had to learn early on, or actually labor on, was give your, and accept, was give your best stuff away for free. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have a good, if you have something that's proven to be useful and insightful, write an article about it, post it, share it, share your knowledge. You are as valuable as you are valuable not as valuable as you think you deserve to be seen, you know? So, you, so it's your job, it's my job to make ourselves valuable to others. Well, we do that through sharing insights, sharing case studies, sharing wisdom, uh, sharing processes we find to be workable. And with those in place, you become more in charge of being able to negotiate your rates. In absence of that, it's you trying to just like prove that you're worthwhile.